again, everybody. Welcome to the last part of the OWL Forum. So to lead this plenary discussion, the final plenary of the program, I'd like to call Valérie Frolon, Executive Director of Aleph. Thank you, Sandra. Good afternoon and welcome to uh, the Halley Chair, Tom Kaplan. Thank you, Tom, for being with us. It's a great pleasure to welcome you. A great pleasure to work with you. And uh, thank you for the strong support you brought to Halif and you have brought for uh, four, year, four years and a half regarding myself, but uh, six years for Halif. So, um, thank you all for being here for the last plenary session and before conclusions. Um, I must confess that uh, I gave a speech yesterday morning and uh, I was very pleased to welcome you. But I must confess that today I'm so pleased about what we have done all together. I'm so pleased of the atmosphere of this forum. Uh, and when we talk about the Ali family, definitely we are right. It does exist, thanks to all of you. So thank you very much for being so supportive. So yesterday we had a, a first session to take stock of six years of Alif. Numerous ideas have already been launched during that session and throughout the debates, many debates of the last two days and very interesting debates. In particular, the necessity to better take into consideration the intangible heritage, but we will uh, go further uh, during the, the session, to develop prevention measures, intention zones, to develop on-the-job training, and also to contribute to the fight against climate change. You all know our motto, which is action, action, action. But we got many other ideas. Uh, cooperation, cooperation, cooperation. So we have to match action and cooperation. Coordination, 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 same. Uh, flexibility, flexibility, flexibility. Agility, but we have known this word for many years, I would say. Partnerships, responsiveness, and so on. So thank you all for all this uh, insight. It will be very useful for us to, for the, the next years. So today the objective is to continue uh, to exchange ideas and to outline some guidelines for the coming years, if possible, and to develop a common vision for the next steps of Alif. I'm very pleased to welcome in person, online and by video, uh, our panelists. Et je suis ravi d'accueillir Son Excellence Nadia Ernzer, Ambassadrice du Luxembourg auprès de l'OCDE et de l'UNESCO et représentante du Luxembourg au sein du Conseil de fondation d'Alif. Merci Nadia. But she has been with us with only a couple of weeks, but she's already very supportive. So thank you, Nadia. Uh, je veux aussi, so welcome to Shoshana Stewart, CEO of Turquoise Mountain. And I don't know if I should say that you are based in the UK because you are based in Afghanistan, you work in Palestine. So please join us. You work in, in uh, Jordan. So you are based in Jordan. Please join us. Je suis aussi ravi d'accueillir uh, Luis Montréal, directeur général de l'Agacan Trust for Culture, et qui est basé à Genève. Mon cher Luis, uh, non seulement nous sommes voisins, uh, et nous avons la chance uh, d'avoir des locaux séparés d'une centaine de mètres. Of, on, on travaille dans des... Dans des uh, with, we are working on different and, and close uh, uh, locations. And uh, we also have, have, as well, we have... Online. Online. Son Excellence Aurélien Le Chevalier, Aurélien, de Aurélien Le Chevalier de the General Director of Global Affairs, Culture, Education and International Development at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in France. Voilà, qui nous entend. Super. Toi aussi, Aurélien, tu es, tu es un soutien d'Alif depuis le début. And, um, Et si nous sommes, en tout cas si moi je suis dans cette aventure, 
and, 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 uh, and if, if I'm part of this journey, it's because of you, my, my friend. And the last, uh, we, will, uh, we will meet by video. Him later. So, over. let's start. <laughs> Micro wait, microphone. So you don't have any uh, PowerPoint, huh? You, do you have one PowerPoint? No, okay. Okay, so, uh, because I'm very serious, I've prepared some questions, you know? Uh, so, uh, the first part of the session will be dedicated to the challenges uh, in protection and in protecting cultural heritage. So, uh, we have already mentioned a couple of challenges, but uh, Luis, you have been involved in the field of cultural heritage protection for five years. I would say five years, if I may, or well, you, you will correct me. Oh, four years, exactly. Uh, you are a key professional. Uh, and so, what are the persisting issues that you face and new challenges for cultural heritage protection today? As the situation, change in recent years, what is your feeling? In certain aspects, the situation has changed thanks to Alif. If Alif did not exist, it should be invented. But the difficulties, the difficulties, <laughs> and, and I would like perhaps afterwards, we, we talk about Alif. On uh, this, this forum has given us a lot of emotions um, a lot of um, very positive evaluation by all the participants by Alif. But if, if you allow me, I would like to do a clinical analysis of Alif, a kind of objective, surgical, non-passional analysis of Alif, because perhaps with all these emotions, you are not realizing how important is what you have achieved. The first, but let me go first to the, to the question. The challenges in preserving the cultural heritage today I think one, if, if we think about the developing countries, the first one is development. It's, it's a paradox, but it is like that. And we see by the, uh, the, the accelerated processes of the delocalization, for example, of industrial production, we, we see archeological sites, uh, historical sites being threatened. That's the one of the first. The second one is the lack of adaptation of the logistic, the, of the juridical uh, legislative, legislative instruments in developing countries. And as a, con uh, as a consequence of that, the lack of administrative controls of what happens. I mean, we've been discussing about illicit traffic, which is one of the things. We have obviously the climate change and the, the threats to the environment, but in a way, in a way, in my, in my order of uh, gravity of the diagnosis, this is not as accelerated as the, the first one that I mentioned. So those are some, some of the things. I, I think also, if I need to be very clear, that there is also the intergovernmental organizations have lost weight in this world. And I can say that because I, I'm from the private sector, but intergovernmental organizations have lost weight. We all remember the time when UNESCO played a fundamental role in the protection of cultural heritage. I myself was a young archeologist during the Nubia campaign. Um, and the UNESCO has lost this uh, kind of um, uh, edge, not because of the personalities in the secretariat, but because of the lack of support from member states, for, by the fact of the politicization of its uh, decisory bodies. Um, UNESCO requires to be, uh, uh, not only UNESCO, the United Nations system needs a kind of rethinking in many aspects, as they did the founders of this system, uh, particularly after the Second World War. So those are part of, of, the, of the issues and the complexities of, of the system. I think I should stop there. Okay, okay. So, uh, does it work? Yes. So, Shoshana, uh, we work with, uh, with uh, Luis in Afghanistan. We are GACAN Trust for Culture in Afghanistan. We also work in Afghanistan with you, uh, with Turquoise Montaigne. Uh, so, 
what we do there is more about intangible heritage. So could you please explain why intangible heritage is also so important and why maybe Alif should be more involved in this field? I would love to explain <laughs> that, Valerie, thank you. Um, yes, uh, we are at Turquoise Mountain lovers of built heritage as much of this conference is, but also lovers of intangible heritage. Um, little bit of jargon, right? What do we mean by this? Of course, we mean food and poetry and music and craft, and that's really sort of where our heart lies. Um, yes, I think we should do more of it. I would love to see that. Um, I thought I might try to make it a little bit tangible for us. So we think about a, a great um, future project that we're hoping to do in Afghanistan. In the mountainous region of Bamiyan in the Central Highlands, there's this incredible 17th century caravanserai. I appreciate that as a building. Restoring that building. But the point is the reuse. What is it going to be? How are we going to make this building live? We run a couple of weaving centers. Carpet weaving is a hugely important craft tradition in Afghanistan. And so this will be a carpet washing and finishing center. And so if we succeed at doing this, this is what the preservation, promotion, living, intangible cultural heritage will look like. You will have women weaving in their homes and in weaving centers in the caravanserai. You'll have carpets drying in the sun. And so you, the whole chain of the intangible tradition, um, from our perspective, we will document, right? We've already done a lot of that, actually, in carpet weaving. And that's about everything from the particular motifs of Bamiyan, the particular carpet qualities and knot counts and techniques, and Ghazni wool, this very special type of Afghan wool, and the interaction between the Afghan weather and those sheep, and how the lanolin, the oil in, the, in that wool makes that very special and unique Afghan wool. Then the content that comes out of that, you've got to, it's one of the things that I love about intangible traditions. I think that actually, particular opportunity to connect to people around the world, both through content, of course, but also through consumption. In order for the transmission to happen and for the next generation to do these things, the economics have to work. They have to be able to earn a living in jewelry, in carpet weaving, and that is about, you know, for us, you have people in Abu Dhabi right now, in New York right now, who can buy Afghan carpets and see videos of Ghazni wool and the processing of that and those particular motifs. So, Yes, I have a love affair with intangible cultural heritage, but I think, that I suppose the last point is that it's particularly important for women. A lot, not all, but a lot of these traditions are, are held and passed on by women. So again, in this Caravanserai project, you're gonna have a living piece of tangible cultural heritage, built heritage, alive with the ambassadors of this carpet tradition as the sole breadwinners for their family, Afghan women. I will be frank with you. Sometimes we have the feeling that when we, when we finance projects in the field of intangible heritage, we finance international expertise, which is great. I love it. But uh, how can we be more concrete and in the field? And you know, that's, that's, to me, that's one of the main issues regarding intangible heritage. So how can we work in this field? That is so interesting, because it doesn't really look like that for us. Um, I, so, uh, yes, it, 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 a little bit. I think that intangible cultural heritage can often only be about the documentation and of it. But that's sort of what's happened before. The, the point is about living heritage and how these traditions have always been passed on and innovated, etc. And so I think that you can fund projects that, um, that are about creating economic opportunities for the communities who are carrying out this intangible heritage. And it, to state the obvious, this is not about economic opportunities for them so they can do this on the weekend. The point is about documenting motifs and then product developing things that they can actually sell based on those motifs. And none of, I mean, you have internationals included in that, but the vast majority about, of that is about working with a community of artisans on also supply chain stuff, right? Like making sure that natural dyes, like let's get the pomegranate skins boiling, 
document it, work on it, get the temperature right. A lot of it needs to be brought back. It's not being used anymore. We're using chemical dyes. So all of that is happening with an, with an artisan community. Okay. Whole value chain, I would say. Okay, thank you. I think that I'm a bit convinced. So thank you, Shasha. Now, <laughs> okay. Um, so maybe for everyone, I, I don't know if Nadia or Aurelien, you want to, to uh, say a few words, but to you, what are the main challenges that we face? I don't know if Nadia, you want to add something right now, or Aurelien, what, what, what do you see? But if you don't want, Aurelien, please. Tu as la parole, si tu veux, Aurélien. Dire quelques mots sur les, les défis. Qu'est-ce qu que tu vois euh, Merci beaucoup. Merci. Bonjour à tous. Thank you and uh, uh, good afternoon for, you, for all of you and uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to participate in this forum. Thank you, Valérie, for for, uh, for giving me the, the, uh, for the chance to witness the creation of Alif. I, I feel uh, very proud to, uh, to see what have Alif achieved and I would like to thank all the, the organizers, uh, the colleagues, the friends uh, who and who all the uh, group of uh, of uh, of people who have worked uh, for the success of this uh, forum and also uh, under the presidency of uh, uh, Tom Kaplan and uh, whom to whom I convey my salutation and my and I pay tribute to um, uh, we, do that, we need to have a vision uh, for the for the next years and I work and at the Ministry of uh, of uh, Culture and uh, um, um, uh, uh, I, I know that the, 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 the preservation in terms in times of war are very important, and I think there is a, there is a lot of ideas that have been mentioned about this. Uh, there's uh, still areas that are under conflict or under war, and they are suffering, and uh, and uh, uh, we need to be prepared and ready to uh, to uh, address any uh, to uh, um, um, to move over to. Um, to tackle every type of uh, of crisis, and we have so we have natural crisis, we have uh, as well some kind of wars, and we have hybrid wars, hybrid wars which are created by the media and which have uh, uh, all uh, many um, instruments are being used, not only the arms but all uh, as well other uh, uh, types of like um, um, like looting, like other types of crime that are used, uh, and as well the uh, environment environment. Uh, cri uh, cri uh, uh, environmental crisis. So we have a, a full, a whole, a, a complex and uh, landscape of crisis and conflicts. And uh, Aleph need to have a, an, eff an effective and efficient uh, approaches. You know, in order in order to ensure that we can um, uh, respond quickly and to engage all the um, actors that involved in the in the conservation. And who can those actors can 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 um, made up the elements of uh, response and of uh, analysis. Uh, a, a big uh, merci, a big thank you for uh, having inviting me. I feel like I'm in a new form, a new home uh, between my family. Um, and uh, uh, this is how, how I feel, uh, though I, I appreciate uh, uh, having invited me. Um, uh, thank you uh, for the organizers, uh, Valérie, uh, to, uh, to your uh, team and the organizers uh, who uh, who are uh, uh, like uh, uh, hosting us in, a, in a the best way possible. Uh, in terms of the the conservation and protection uh, of um, uh, heritage in, 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 in areas and regions of conflict, and uh, and um, we need to evaluate, uh, we need to ev assess every uh, situation in itself. Uh, and the UNESCO is becoming more and more uh, uh, more politicized and more uh, complicated, uh, more complex in the in, the, in its approach. And I see that it can. Uh, 
have a uh, int it can intervene in many questions, in many conditions, and respond quickly. So it is very important uh, amid all what we do, do that we uh, verify that we make sure that all the interventions fall within the timeline, uh, uh, the assigned timeline or defined timeline. Yeah, we need to think about all this and effectively the uh, the sustainability and uh, and the uh, the, appro uh, the approach uh, needs as well to, uh, to be well examined and considered. Uh, and uh, Alif, as an institution, uh, a humanist uh, uh, um, institution, needs to keep that in mind uh, in terms of the equipment and the uh, and the, the development of, uh, of resources uh, need to be at the core of our mission in terms of uh, uh, um, uh, moral heritage uh, without uh, the without taking care of um, uh, uh, intangible uh, intangible heritage we would have uh, we would uh, we would be at risk of losing our efforts in conserving our uh, heritage um, uh, so when I, when I talk when I talk to uh, uh, we need to uh, reinforce the complementarity of the instruments that uh, that we are using and the uh, alif um, uh, which is a like a small agile ac uh, actor and partner uh, so it is um, clear that we have all a, um, a a role to play and this role is completely needs to be in complementarity or in addition or in line with other efforts and with other act actors and uh, the, uh, I think it's very important to to mention that when the uh, the, uh, the UNESCO uh, the plenary session is taking place in uh, 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 Mosul, uh, which has uh, a, the, uh, the, the, the intervention of, of uh, UNESCO have permitted to uh, to whisper life again in the monuments and the heritage uh, in Mosul, and thanks to the uh, to the contribution of UNESCO and other uh, stakeholders present here uh, with us. So, so the international support for Ali of Nadia. Nadia. I will switch again into French. Nadia, uh, you, uh, you, uh, you have mentioned about the question of uh, heritage. What are the motivation of Luxembourg, uh, Luxembourg or the uh, drivers of Luxembourg pour améliorer, pour, uh, in order to um, uh, so what are the drivers and you as a new joiner how do you see this organization and how do you understand the the motives of uh, Luxembourg to be present here and uh, how we see the future from here uh, before I say anything uh, I would like to uh, I would like to pay tribute to all of my female Parce colleagues. Uh, it is important. Uh, as, of, as you have mentioned, the women have a, a, a great role in the transmission of uh, of traditions and customs, uh, and uh, this is why we need to pay tribute to their efforts. Why, Lux why Luxembourg has uh, like has engaged? Uh, I think the UNESCO is a big uh, organization. It has the prestige, and it's uh, and uh, and beaming uh, uh, over uh, the world. Uh, but Alif is still a a startup, a agile society foundation, and uh, which is is uh, succeeding in in motivating and in realizing uh, uh, in practice putting in practice the, its its projects and uh, and the uh, unesco is uh, is uh, proud to see this happening uh, uh, and the, uh, this is motivating us to join uh, to put uh, together our uh, efforts and forces uh, to join forces um, and uh, um, um, uh, when, uh, when I think about Lebanon or, uh, or seism uh, and or earthquakes and Ukraine, La, uh, Alif has has moved, has been mobilized very quickly, and this is why uh, this culture and this approach need to be developed further. And uh, we will um, make all effort, efforts to uh, 
that support uh, Alif in this in her in its approach. Uh, maybe the, in in a year or more time, um, uh, uh, um, it, it's it's going to be a good. Uh, uh, stage or era to ask questions what we should are, uh, what we should achieve on the long term uh, uh, for the organization for the for Alif uh, for uh, UNESCO to continue in achieving or uh, uh, the outcomes that is achieving today the, um, uh, uh, a lot of ideas have been uh, mentioned uh, earlier and this is I was uh, I was pleased to when I started thinking about what to say and what to mention and uh, during the discussions during the last two days, it was uh, as well delightful to to hear all the uh, ideas. Uh, and I think uh, uh, Alif as well is uh, is pro joining uh, or pro joining efforts with uh, Luxembourg, and I mean by that uh, with UNESCO uh, as well. The the multilateral instruments complement the com this complementary of these instruments need to be reinforced and. Uh, and I can see that there is a, a clear uh, complementarity and alignment uh, uh, and, uh, uh, between uh, uh, Alif and UNESCO and uh, Alif uh, other and other uh, organizations uh, uh, around the world. That's, and we need to work uh, to. Um, to uh, arrange uh, uh, this coordination of efforts and uh, and this uh, our and the, our efforts in, uh, in order to be able to uh, develop this quick response and uh, uh, I can uh, and I can I can uh, recall the ideas the, the great ideas that have been mentioned during these two days and we need to uh, encourage the the, the, the the people the 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 the, the company the, the stakeholders the um, the actors the governments to, in order to uh, to motivate them to put being in to, or to put in more or to, to invest themselves more uh, in this direction in terms of sustainability and inclusiveness uh, the philo the philo the, uh, con the humanist concept and philosophy and this, oh, we need to to, to work on, uh, locally but uh, on, on the uh, long term um, and we need to make sure that uh, more uh, experts are trained and uh, because uh, the experts uh, are not born uh, overnight, uh, we, we need to, or created overnight, we need to develop, uh, uh, to help them develop since uh, since early age. And uh, 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 we don't need to take, like, or to make them uh, as uh, teachers, school teachers, but uh, uh, we need to, uh, we need to um, raise awareness among the, the, uh, the population, the whole, the population, uh, and so they can, people, get engaged uh, in uh, and motivated uh, and is, is particularly in turn in, in, in times of emergencies it's, it's um, and this is a like a fusion of know-how and uh, and um, uh, up and risk and responsibility and engagement and uh, as well the 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 culture of uh, instilling the culture and the all involving all the, the industry and the sectors that are uh, that have interest this is a a, a, a a, a word that uh, breathe and uh, through this uh, this heritage and uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 politics at the Luxembourg uh, is uh, uh, in the foreign politics are uh, feminist in its uh, and its uh, um, uh, since it's it's on since the onset so we uh, uh, we need to also to engage the women more and then the, and to, to, to make sure that the equality of gender is uh, respected as you have mentioned uh, uh, and the flexibility as I have mentioned uh, earlier um, we shouldn't confine ourselves to uh, uh, the all, only to to to, or to to cases of conflict and and the post conflict uh, situations uh, more uh, valve, uh, as well, in, term, in, in situations of natural crisis, we need to respond quickly. And, and these were my short uh, and uh, concise uh, ideas. And uh, and if you'd like more ideas, I, will, I would be uh, uh, pleased to discuss them with you individually. Thank you.
And actually, uh, if you allow me, Maria, Your Excellency, uh, um, um, uh, a, 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 a council of administrators or the board, uh, we need to, we can uh, submit all these ideas to this uh, to this uh, con uh, council. Uh, Aurélien, um, uh, Aurélien Le Chevalier, uh, maybe you, would, you can recall uh, the, uh, the uh, what has and the initiative of uh, uh, France uh, or that and the uh, the Elif, the Alif uh, initiatives uh, has been um, supported by the uh, by as well the French authorities. Uh, why uh, uh, why this relationship with the UAE is so special? Why this partner? Why this uh, partnership uh, with Alif? Why uh, the, this partner? This partner? This partnership has been so convincing in supporting and in achieving what have been done so far. Um, is there any any uh, idea about the uh, Red Cross uh, uh, being created uh, somewhere? Uh, thank you, uh, Valérie. Uh, thank you, Valérie. I think that uh, the France, uh, and since six years, uh, has apprehended the uh, the situation, and that, uh, like other, uh, that there are many governments and many associations, many found the uh, foundations, and that uh, the our heritage is, is so vulnerable and uh, is uh, is under challenge continuously. Um, I think there is a like an. Uh, um, uh, there's a certain harmony between France, uh, the UAE, and other uh, uh, organizations like the UNESCO and the, all the stakeholders, the holders working in, in this sector. That uh, there is there is a need to new instruments to create to new instruments, and this is and this is how the role of uh, of Alif kicks in. Uh, um, and I think uh, that uh, we can say nowadays that. Uh, um, uh, Alif uh, has proved uh, its effic efficiency and that created for itself a, 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 uni a unique uh, uh, footprint in, in, in the, and that it has become a role model for other uh, initiatives because it works in this with the spirit of uh, teamwork and uh, and this spirit has been so strong since uh, at the beginning and this is uh, the uh, that has uh, Characterized by and, and the role of uh, and the, what you have achieved has been characterized by the uh, by the flexibility and by the quickness that you have with which you have uh, responded and for all these reasons the uh, France and the president of the Republic and the uh, the in, uh, engagement the personal engagement of uh, Emmanuel Macron uh, 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 we are decided to to uh, to work to work with Arif uh, all the way and the. Uh, uh, the idea of crea creation of a, a Red Cross, a Red or Red Crescent uh, international organization for the uh, for the for the heritage um, is uh, is as well a uh, is as a question uh, of a difficult question to to respond to. I don't think it's necessary to take a decision or a bit to. to to be um, to have uh, to have to be clear in the between um, uh, to, to, to take a side uh, between doing it or not doing it, but uh, we need to keep in mind that uh, there is a this all this uh, uh, all, all heritage needs uh, need to be maintained. Uh, this uh, regardless of uh, of religion, uh, uh, gender, um, uh, nationality, uh, uh, because uh, uh, the uh, the heritage is for all and. And around uh, those heritages and hordes, this um Monuments. There are uh, common histories. There are common uh, um, uh, factors and elements that are and uh, and uh, that we share all. Uh, um, but we need as as well to assume the fact that uh, we we shouldn't not uh, politicize um, uh, um, heritage. But uh, we need to have we we need to have all in um, 
uh, and engagement, uh, politi uh, ethical and humanitarian uh, 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 and, uh, engagement towards keeping up or to, or to developing these values of sharing and, uh, and, the, and the values of uh, being responsible. And I think there is a, 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 a part of a side of it that is uh, uh, political. And as a, a dipl and as a diplomat, I am I, I, um, I pitched in uh, so it, like uh, diplomatic solutions and uh, and uh, and this is uh, and this politics which should be used an instrument for for conserving and maintaining peace merci aurélien je crois qu'alif continuera thank you aurélien i think uh, alif will remain uh, an assistant and Alors, help for us une question a question to you and Shoshana and Louis. Climate change is definitely a burning issue, an increasing issue. So, how could we, how could we do to integrate, to better integrate climate change and the fight against climate change in different debate and, of course, in the uh, in the next uh, COP28, uh, how can we do to better integrate cultural, um, culture and, pro and um, cultural heritage protection in humanitarian aid, to better integrate uh, cultural heritage protection in uh, development aid? Because, you know, sometimes we have the feeling that when we ask the development aid agency, they told us, no, no, culture is, cultural heritage is not part of our mission. When we ask uh, to get some fund, we ask uh, some uh, emergency uh, organization. They say, not really, you know, culture, it's not in, in our scope. So how could we do to put culture and cultural debt protection at the core of different uh, uh, um, domain in, in, of different sectors like development aid, um, humanitarian aid, and, and uh, uh, the fight against climate change? Shoshana, you, you are, I, I see you are eager to answer, so I'm please. Very, so I'd love to take the development bit of it. Um, sure. You know, Aleph works for cultural preservation in conflict. That is literally the mission of Turquoise Mountain. So your North Star is our North Star. But I spend most of my time talking to the US government, the German government, development agencies about <laughs> why cultural heritage is a good idea when they are looking at job numbers, and education levels, et cetera, right? So I, I have thought about this a lot. Here's my answer to it, which is that cultural heritage is fundamentally different from all the rest of development, and it works better because of this difference. So <laughs> development projects are trying to deal with problems, right? Let's find the greatest poverty levels and invest there. Education problems, issues with how people treat women in society. Let's fix those things, right? Cultural heritage is the opposite. It says you have this incredible asset, this building, this tradition, and it is priceless to you, to your community, to the world. It's a totally different conversation. So that's the first thing. That's why it works, I think, because it's a fundamentally respectful and joyful interaction. Um, but the way, like, mechanistically that it can work, I think, is that where the starting point is cultural heritage, because then you have a, a, a fundamentally positive relationship with a group of people, but then to build everything else around it. So if I look at Afghanistan, which is where we have been working the longest, we work with one community in the center of, uh, of a neighborhood in the old city of Kabul, Murakhani. We run... Uh, an institute that trains in traditional crafts, the intangible side, we restore historic buildings, but we also have a primary school and a clinic. We build infrastructure, water supply, sanitation, electricity, and it's all based around heritage, but the outcomes coming out of it are jobs, clinic visits, and, and that is what other development agencies will give us funding for. But I do think that I, so for, in Afghanistan right now, I can't, as a British organization, just go run a maternal child health clinic in the center of Kabul. It's not, it's not gonna work, it doesn't make any sense. But I can, because I have been working with that community for 17 years. So it, you can do all this other stuff around cultural heritage. That's my answer. 
Thank you, Shoshana. Any other comments? Nadia. I couldn't agree more. Um, en fait, c'est une, une façon de présenter la chose. Parce que That's a way a to present the thing, the issue, because there is no economic development without the people, and they are the ones who transmit the cultural heritage. We should transmit it in a way that we can use this uh, uh, educational and cultural trait to have uh, an education and heritage goal. One cannot work without the other, and we have to really work on the way we present things and say, of course, the culture is important, uh, and we have to really own it. Uh, so that's why may maybe this technique will help us have good uh, results, because the uh, local economy depends on it. Uh, what I mean here is tourism and it helps in education and other goals promoted by the UNESCO and other organizations at the international uh, level. As for the climate change, let's think about a little bit uh, of uh, the uh, feelings. Of course, China, uh, climate change uh, is uh, affecting our uh, the countries, but also monument sites, etc. And this should be concluded in all the COPs and all the conferences. Climate change. Uh, uh, affects everyone. So it will be a good uh, argument to promote the cause and uh, promote uh, the sustainable and green energy and not affect the resources that are also uh, harming our uh, the, uh, cultural heritage. Can we count on France also to assist us in uh, these uh, ideas, uh, specifically climate change and COP20? and its inclusion in it, of course. Yes, definitely, it's very important. We are already doing this partially, but I think we should work more together in the groups that are, uh, are working on the uh, heritage protection in order to become uh, the uh, collection and uh, the collection of funds in COP28. Uh, thank you, Shoshana, Louis, Alif uh, also is an ecosystem. How can local and international actors in the future? Do you have some ideas? Louis, you may have ideas. <laughs> well, the, the first thing is you need to be aware that you have created a very efficient instrument. There was the vision to create a public-private partnership in the form of a Swiss foundation. That offers you many, many more opportunities of uh, achieving support from many different sectors. You have also been created initially, and let me, let me perhaps make some, some thinking that you are too near to the trenches and perhaps uh, that will open other horizons. The first thing is you have developed a method. You were created as a grant-making foundation. Grant-making foundations in some systems like the United States cannot do anything else, but you are working in the Swiss system and you can do grants, but you've gradually developed a way in which you select your grantees, you discuss with your grantees ahead of time, you tailor the projects together with your future grantee, and you accompany the grantee until the end. This is unique and is important and is a good use of financial resources that guarantees you that is no waste. So you have, in six years, arrived to this point, and gradually you have created this method of managing you need to ask you, if we're talking about your future now, you need to ask yourselves, and I suppose you're asking yourselves with your board, if you want to go further, and in some specific cases, become an operating entity. This is a question. The second thing, you were talking about your opportunities. I would like to talk about my convictions about how you should pursue your mode of financing. And I heard very clearly the questions about neutrality that come from Paris. But let me talk about the financing. For me, the first premise is important 
that your basic majority funders are states for several reasons. The first one is that you need a lot of money because the needs to, uh, to uh, act in uh, uh, conflict zones require, for the time being, 100 million, but we've heard this morning, this morning that we need uh, 100 kilometers of freeway budget to really, and these only states could provide that. I will hate the idea that a multinational corporation will give you a 500 million grant and take power over Alif because you will lose your independence, your everything, your capacity. So I think you have to be bound to public funds. You need to continue exploring why states will like to participate in Alif. What, what are the reasons? I think I could think about several ones. First of all, that this way some states may participate in projects in other states where their policies, they not, not allow them to have access. In a way, uh, Alif becomes a ne neutral, efficient conduit for aid and a much more efficient than through the bilateral direct relationships which are exposed to a lot of waste and corruption in the other side, in some cases. So this is, this is why I think you need to maintain a system where the states own Alif, but own Alif generously, act, let, letting Alif respond as a neutral, I repeat, a neutral institution to address the real needs in conflict zones without taking too much notion of geopolitical conditions. I think you need to address also how the private sector could be more present in financing Alif. And I think um, Benedict de Montlore is going to hate me, but I think you should copy the World Monuments Fund at another scale. I think you, you should let private sector also to be able to fund, perhaps a la carte, some of your projects. And the last thing in terms of financing, you need to think very seriously if you need an endowment and how your member states should constitute an endowment. Because if you want to be effective in a major catastrophe, you will need to draw funds from an endowment. Now, the third thing, how you can engage more people is by reviewing your program and mission. The first one is so obvious, the earthquake in Turkey and Syria. It's telling you that Alif has to tell its governance bodies to change the mission, to enlarge the mission into dis disaster mitigation. Um, but there are an other number of things for what you are asking me. Is Somebody said here yesterday, localization. You need to localize in more permanent way your activities through your associates. I think the matter of prevention is very difficult, how you prevent conflict. There's only one way you could respond quickly to conflict is having people well-trained in every country about conflict. And then I think a major investment of Alif should be training of adequate professionals in the country that when a catastrophe or an armed conflict starts are able to, to, to act. But last but not least, I think you need to think seriously on the role of Alif as a clearing house. This forum, in fact, is acting as a clearing house. In one hand, we debate things here, but we make people in contact how this opportunity that you have to be a cleaning house between entities of so many different levels and status, how this could be uh, improved. But why not to think also about Alif as a think tank? And a think tank that will need to start not by reinventing the wheel, because as we mentioned several times during these days here, and I, again, I, I think we've been several days here, we've only been two, as Munir this, this uh, earlier on. Um, as we've said before, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. 
the military have invented many things. We need, as a think tank, you, you could create a corpus of knowledge adapted to the specific function of um, addressing uh, uh, situations of conf arm, uh, conf uh, armed conflict that will be very, very important. And then, of course, I, I, I disagree, and you allow me to disagree on the notion of neutrality. If Arif has to be efficient, I don't say, let me, let me act as a diplomat now, I don't say that you need to be neutral, but you need to look neutral. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I was sure that having you in this panel, we will leave with a lot of ideas, and thank you very much, uh, uh, Luis. Shoshana, please. So I just wanted to, is this, yeah. I just wanted to pick up on this neutrality point. Luis and I have been discussing it. I feel very strongly about, about this, and just to make it quite practical, um, two of the countries in which I work, uh, of the four, Myanmar and, and Afghanistan. These are two governments which the international community has a very difficult relationship with, to understate the point. My, I have about 400 staff and 390 of them work in Myanmar, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, and Jordan. So we are all in country. If I make a statement about the Taliban, either what they are doing which is easier to work with than we expected, or what they are doing that I do not appreciate and makes it difficult, or the Tatmadaw, the Bur Burmese military government, I just leave tomorrow. I don't get to work there anymore. In fact, when I hear organizations, to be frank, making political statements, condemning things that a government is doing, it tells me that they're not working there <laughs> because it's not possible. It, it, is, it endangers your staff, and even if it's not going to cause the immediate harm to my staff, it endangers my ability to operate. So the neutrality thing is so important, and it is a choice, right? We live in an increasingly chaotic and politicized world. So it is very tempting to make statements, and many organizations make these, these choices wonderfully, to condemn things, to support things, but that is a choice. And I think Aleph is in a very strong position, and it means that operating in these places is possible. Please keep doing it. Thank you, Shoshana. Thank you. So uh, let me ask our dear friend, uh, Jacques Emmanuel Saunier from Total Energy, with, with us, but uh, by video. So uh, what can a private foundation expect from Alif, and how can we convince other private institutions to join us? Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to apologize for not being present today, but I am delighted to have the opportunity to address this first ever Alif Forum. I would like to start by taking a moment to pay tribute to the people of Syria and Turkey, suffering due to the recent earthquakes, and commend the local teams for being of aid to the populations in need. Heritage is of unprecedented value of local culture and world history. Therefore, at Total Energies, we believe supporting initiatives like the one of Alif is crucial in current times. This partnership is based on a convergence of concerns. First, a convergence on committing to preserving heritage. The Total Energy Foundation has been involved for a long time in the preservation of heritage notably for more than 17 years in France. The partnership with the LEAF bears witness to this definite commitment to heritage in areas particularly affected by the numerous world conflicts. We see a second convergence within the international dimension that characterizes a LEAF. This scope makes sense for the Foundation Total Energies. Indeed, our company has an historical international dimension and is established in 
more than 130 countries around the world. Heritage is a witness of the history of those areas as a vector of their influence and their pacification. Finally, a convergence lies in the concern of involving local communities and youths, Total Energies Foundation main commitment. We are convinced that heritage is a source of pride for the communities and the support for professional insertion for the use. Alif ensures that the heritage safeguarding project it finances include the active participation of local population and communities and encourage for each initiatives the dialogue between cultures. With these convictions in mind, the Total Energies Foundation is proud to be the first corporate foundation to support Alif in this new five-year period for the benefit of a lasting impact on damaged territories and humanity. Now the question is how to increase the means of Alif in favor of heritages in zones of conflict and in particular how to encourage the involvement of private companies. Alif has serious assets which must be put forward to attract private funds in favor of heritage zone in conflict. They will allow Alif to multiply its positive impact. The first asset to set forth is that Alif's approach is resolutely focused on action and the realization of projects. In only five years, Alif has demonstrated its agility, its reactivity, and its capacity to respond quickly to the crisis the world heritage is regularly confronted with. Alif's motto, action, 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 is not an empty word. In fact, Alif's funds field initiative as a priority. These projects aim to work in close collaboration with the authorities, communities, and local partners. Furthermore, Alif's capacity to involve local populations in the rehabilitation process and to convey is a key asset. The respect of local wishes as well as the inclusion of local populations in the rehabilitation process are fundamental elements of the method promoted by Alif. Alif carries out its projects in collaboration with international experts associated with a local executive team trained to the methods of heritage restoration on this occasion. Thus, the transmission and development of local expertise and know in the field of heritage protection is undeniably essential. And last but not least, Alif is an organization of international stature, relying on the Making Alliance for the service of heritage. Making Alliance is an intervention modality dear to the Total Energies Foundation. Alif is the expression of an alliance between several states, private partners, and experts, thus guaranteeing a pluralist vision. These stakeholders have chosen to unite to finance this initiative. This constitutes an exemplary model of collaboration, allowing to multiply the force of action of Alif in favor of endangered heritage. Preserving heritage while integrating impacted population is a formidable way of preserving traditions and cultural heritages in all their diversity. It also means not letting the populations dissolve in the conflicts they are subjected to. Protecting the past, making it better known, is to participate in mutual understanding and dialogue between populations and communities that are sometimes torn apart. We cannot build a future of peace without recognizing the past in all its complexity. 
the mission carried by Alif is essential because it acts for peace. Its project can thus serve as a means of reconciliation after a conflict, but also of resilience of populations and communities. The Total Energies Foundation is proud and happy to be at the side of Alif and to support it in its missions and encourages other actors to join the Alliance in order to contribute to reparation and peace in the world. Thank you. So thank you, Jacques Emmanuel, uh, for helping us uh, convince uh, new potential donors. So we are about to finish, and so I will just ask you uh, to give me two words that could be our motto for the next few years. So I will start with uh, Nadia. It seems that you thought about it. Very much so. Can I make an expose of 45 minutes? Just, or no? Because we are about <laughs> know, to finish and the minister has arrived. So, uh, so. Flexibility. C'est ça l'atout essentiel de l'UNESCO. Flexibility, this is what uh, we de need. Flexibility. Pardon pour l'UNESCO. This is what we need at Alif. Sorry, I said UNESCO. It is important to keep this flexibility, to uh, really enlarge our action and um, to benefit from what we have. Think of the human being who is at the center of our mission to have a better, uh, enlightening future. Second, I have two. First, flexibility to uh, make such uh, forums uh, a routine because it is important to really uh, share our work uh, such as today. Thank you, Nata. I think my team will be happy if we tell them we will redo this next year. Shoshana, please. Shoshana. Okay. I've gotten six words. Ain't broke, don't fix, make bigger. Thank you, Shoshana. Excellent. Luis. Two words. Be visionary. Thank you. But you are visionary. And Aurélien, the last two words of our session. Merci beaucoup. Je pense que ça a été dit un petit peu par... Les autres panélistes, mais garder l'agilité. I think uh, uh, it was uh, said, keep this agility, keep this flexibility. I think uh, these are really important and uh, make uh, a diversity future for us in terms of partners. Uh, continue to uh, uh, de to develop and progress uh, and expand yourself. Uh, we are okay on this. Have this uh, training uh, tool uh, specifically for young women uh, and uh, have. Alif as a, a feminist initiative, it was already mentioned also. As for the uh, visionary issue, if Alif want to be operating projects, not only a think tank, but uh, also a think and be tank, uh, we are open for such an evolution, but we should, uh, uh, with the uh, council or the board of the foundation, define it uh, in order to make Alif specifically an operator. And most importantly, keep this teamwork, this collective teamwork, and uh, especially with the president uh, Macron and their uh, we thank uh, you for the presence Merci and the name Aurélien. of the president and everyone. Thank you so much. Again, thank you all for being so active, so friendly uh, during the last two days. Uh, thank you to our speakers. Thank you for being so, uh, for launching so many ideas. And now I think that we will give the floor to uh, Tom Kaplan, our chair, and to His Excellency. Uh, the Minister of Culture of, uh, and Youth of the Emirates. So, Beth Sandra, please go ahead. Thank you. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Merci. Thank you. Um, and yes, yeah, so hello again. The last time, uh, one of the last sort of the penultimate 
to bit time I'll be here. Uh, so just a couple of housekeeping remarks before we go right into our, our final closing remarks um, session. Really it's one thing, which is the logistics for after the closing session and our evening activity. So when the session closes today, there are shuttles that will take you back to your hotels. You'll have about 30 to 40 minutes to refresh, do what you need to do at the hotel, get your luggage if you're leaving. And there will be shuttles at each hotel leaving at 5.30 to take you to the Louvre Abu Dhabi for a visit that has been kindly arranged for us by the Department of Culture and Tourism of Abu Dhabi and followed by a cocktail evening um, at the Louvre in the, um, the, art, the art lounge. So again, when this is over, take the shuttles back to the hotel, freshen up. At 5.30, the, sh the shuttles leave to take you to the Louvre Abu Dhabi. And you should all have your transfer information if you're coming back to the hotels. The evening will end at 10 p.m. with more buses to take you back. If you're leaving directly to the airport, you should all have your um, departure information and you can email um, Alif, the Alif events team if you have any questions about those final departures. So that I think is the last announcement I have before we start our final session. And uh, so the final session is the closing remarks. And I'm just waiting a few minutes for our eminent guests to arrive. So if the bumper is queued, we could play that. Otherwise, I can talk for a few more minutes. <laughs> we can. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. The Louvre is a wonderful museum. I'm sure you'll love it. The tour is excellent. They'll be done in three languages. There'll be a group for English speakers, for French speakers, for Arabic speakers, just like the languages that we've had throughout the forum over the past two days. And I'm told that the art lounge is phenomenal. An incredible view of Abu Dhabi is waiting for you. So it's gonna be spectacular. There's a DJ, so if you want to dance, then you can. Um, and it'll be a lovely way to finish these two days of discussions, de rencontres, meetings, um, exchanges, other synonyms for talking with each other. And, um, and so you're encouraged to continue that tonight at the Louvre Abu Dhabi, where we will be having our final event. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we'll put some music, we'll play some music. 